beginning to think I need to find my stools again. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about this today, and you find a lot of people running around that are telling you some better way or some explanation that they've learned about something that they're still learning the process of why something happened or how it happened. It's kind of like people telling you to put, oh, I don't know, $10 in the plate, you know, that passes around and God will give you $100. No, he won't. <laughs> or they say, send me $5 and God will bless you and give you $100. No, he won't. <laughs> Well, you know, if you just have faith the size of a mustard seed, you know, you'll say to this mountain, and you know, your seed, your faith must be so small because I don't see no mountains moving around. Well, if you had it that small, it probably would move. But you see, the same people that are trying to tell you something, you know, they're always telling you something that really is not true, but not false. It's false in one way. It's not accurate because they usually take out of context the part of scripture that they're using to make it fit into context. They're not going to tell you the rest of the story. Me, I like to know the whole story. And for me, the bottom line is you can't always get what you want, but you get what you need. You know that song? Did you know that that was based on a scripture? Yeah. Believe it or not, you know, and it's kind of like... The guy, who knows, maybe his mama, you know, had raised him on her knee, you know, telling him, look, you can't always get what you want, but you're going to get what you need, you know. And that's the way God operates. Now, he does bless sometimes, and so don't get me wrong. He will do sometimes some things that maybe you don't want to get what he's going to give you. <laughs> Matter of fact, he might tell you to stuff it. I mean, seriously, did you know that God could give you what you want? And it might not be the best thing. You see, there are these guys wandering around the wilderness. Yeah, of course, not that they should have been wandering around the wilderness, but they weren't too bright, you know. So they were kind of arguing about whether or not they could do something that God told them to do because they really didn't want to do it. So they wound up getting stuffed or stuck. Let's just say stuck right now. Out in the wilderness, wandering around until God said they'll die off before they're going to go into where I'm sending them because, you know what, I can't deal with them. They were Jewish. <laughs> Children of Israel, that is. And so they took the shortcut, you know, and got straight to the land of Israel and went to go see, you know, where they were going to live. And God says, hey, check it out, man. I got all this ready. All you got to do is go in and trust me. I'll take care of you. And he said, uh-uh, man, I've seen it. You know, there's skyscrapers in there. And you know what? They're big dudes that built those skyscrapers. So I don't think we can do it. And God said, fine, head for the desert. You know, so he stuck them out in the desert until wiped them all out, 40 years. Brought them back. But you see, they were out wandering in the desert, you know, and they were getting a little tired of eating this manna, you know, manna here, manna there, manna everywhere. And so they were whining and complaining. You know, they were saying, you know what? I don't like it. I, You know, here we are, you know, we used to have all kinds of delicacies. You know, we ate snails and nails and all the other junk, you know, in Egypt. Well, they didn't, but, you know, they were exaggerating. So they wanted, you know, something else besides this manna that was perfect for them in the desert. Because really, when it's hot, when it's dry, when it's desert climate like that, and you're out in, you know, like you've seen the desert, you know what it's like. You're probably better off not eating some heavy food items. You know, you're better off eating something fully nutritious and light. We used to call them, you know, rations. You know, they were rationed for what they needed in the right climate. But... They decided to whine and complain. I want something else. I want a burger. You know, one guy said. Another guy says, hey, let's go to McDonald's. And another guy says, hey, you know what? It's taco time in Egypt. Let's go get some. So God says, fine, stuff it. And so what he did was that he sent an east wind. Now, that's not a good thing. If you've ever heard with stories about east winds, you know, oh, and I may be wrong about the east wind, but he sent a wind. Anyways, and all of a sudden, all these quail came flying in. Well, from what the Bible says, God literally stuffed them with quail. They had so much quail that they were chomping on it and they were so eager that they got their bellies full and they literally started vomiting. They started having diarrhea and had all kinds of like bad experiences with this meat 
because, quite frankly, they didn't have any potatoes to go with it. They only had manna. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> For all you mean potatoes eaters. But the point being is simply, God gave them what they wanted more so than what they should have really trusted the Lord for. Because what they needed was mana. What they got was what they asked for. You don't always, quite frankly, want what you're asking for, if you're smart. Because God might give it to you, and once you get it, you'll find out it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. It may be detrimental to you more than it's beneficial to you. And that's something that I learned a long time ago. You know, I, I used to whine about some things in my life, and then I began to realize, you know what? After watching some people in action, I don't want to win the lottery. <laughs> no, thank you. I've seen what they do with that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, man. No, I don't want to sign up for, you know, military service. I'm sorry. I've seen what they do with that. Hmm, maybe I already tried that one. Oh, well. But the point is, is that a lot of times we don't see the long-term effect of what our short-term decision-making is. And that's something that God can do better than we can. We are, after all, a demanding people. We want what we want when we want it. You know, Americans notoriously want to go through the drive-thru and get their faith, you know, get their blessings and get their honor and glory, you know, and get the ministry and get all that stuff, you know, in the drive-thru, you know, car, whip right through the drive-thru, get it all signed up to them, you know, and get on with it, you know, that way they can text it, get it done, get it over with, and get on with heaven. I mean, is it, doesn't that sound like most Christians you know? I mean, come on, we got soccer moms, we got everybody, we're busy, 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 got to get it done, get it over with, get on with it. We only have so much time, you know, we have to schedule it. We multitask. The funny thing is, I don't find the word multitask anywhere in Scripture. God doesn't multitask. God is a dimensional reality of one. He's able to focus in on one, you, and deal with you one-to-one. -one, and all the other ones at the same time. That's not multitasking, believe it or not. That's unitasking. Now, how he does it, I don't know. But you see, Jesus didn't multitask either. He focused in on the one person. He focused in on the one issue. He was focused rather than unfocused. He looked at the long term as opposed to the short term. He was able to understand that there's more to this asking and getting than just simply, hey, you know, I want a million bucks. You should ask and we'll get it. Well, I'm going to ask. I want that million. I can handle it. And you'll probably find, once you got that million dollars, you got killed the next day. Because guess what? Your name was put in the lottery. And they said, oh, so-and-so won. And every other criminal in your neighborhood, guess what they found out? They know you won. And if they know you, they're coming over. They're going to visit you in the night. Jesus said something similar to that. In the sense of, he said there was a guy that was, you know, he had these farm, you know, and he was like prosperous and he did his thing, you know, and he kind of like, you know, built a little barn, you know, and he got his food together and he put it all and he says, hey, you know, this is pretty nice. You know, I was successful. I got my food, I got my shelter, I got everything together. Now I think, you know what I'll do? I'll build a bigger barn, I'll go get another house, I'll go get more and get bigger and better and bolder. You know, kind of like churches do these days. You know, they get bigger ministries, they get bigger houses, they get bigger churches. I know a glass cathedral that did that. You know, it was interesting because they were the kind of people that said, ask and God will give it to you. Just claim it and God will do it. Just have enough faith and God will give it to you. Well, I don't know, you know. I watched that glass cathedral being built from a drive through where Christians used to drive through and they used to get their sermon. Seriously, it was a drive through at one time. They used to get their sermon by going through a drive through Used to, you know, kind of see that kind of preacher going on, you know, teaching that. And I used to think, hmm, that's interesting. Then they said, you know what, we need to build this giant glass cathedral. And I didn't throw any stones at it, thank God. You know, but I used to kind of wonder about that. You know, I said, well, you know, because they kept saying, you know, all we got to do is believe, you know, and we believe that it'll be fine. And, you know, for a while, for a season, for a little bit 
of time. It was okay. They got bigger. They got better. They got bolder. They got longer. They got wilder. And they went bankrupt. Oops. You see, there's always something that's going to come along that's going to challenge where your foundation is and what type of structure you built. Now, I don't know about you. I don't ask for much anymore. You know, I'm more like, hey, Lord, you know, <laughs> I need to trust you more, but I'm not asking for more because I, you know, I, I got enough to deal with right now in my own life. You know, I got a wife. That's enough to deal with. <laughs> Boy, is that my hands full. I got my own life to deal with. Whoa, man, that's a mess as it is. So I really don't need to be asking for a whole lot of stuff, you know. I don't need to deal with a whole lot more than what I got. So I kind of like to go back towards less is better than more. And, you know, that's the opposite of what Christians right now are saying because they always want you to get more. You know, oh, go for the raise. You know, the coaches, you know, they'll tell you, you deserve more money. You know, and the company says, yeah, you're right. You deserve more money, but we don't got it, so we got to let you go. Sorry, you got to shut down that plant, and it's gone. And you've seen it. Come on now. Tell the truth. You know as well as I do that corporate America has downsized on purpose to get rid of the oversized budget that they had because they can't afford to pay retirements. They can't afford to pay these outrageous union health care worker benefits. Matter of fact, most of the cities and municipalities that government employees were getting these huge benefits, they can't afford to pay them. So guess what's happening? Sorry, cut them out. That's what happened. The reality is we should all ask for God to lead us in what we should ask for. We all should have a little bit of wisdom to ask God for what He wants for us, not what we want to get for us. And that's kind of the problem with what we deal with. We are a consumer-based society where we consume. They don't really produce. And that's what you need to think about yourself as. Are you a consumer Christian? Or are you a producer Christian? What are you producing or are you complaining? Are you making a way for others to follow with you, you know, to the heavenly city, no, to the promised land? Are you actually taking more or giving more than what you're getting? Because, quite frankly, I, I don't really understand all these Christians that are running around and have all these possessions, you know. They, they got a lot of worldly goods, you know. They got a lot of junk in their trunk, you know, and they're, they're carrying it around everywhere they're going, you know. It's kind of like, wow. Is there anything in deny yourself that doesn't seem to fit there? Now, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, you know. And maybe I'm the one denying myself, and I've been denied all my worldly possessions, you know, that I could really be enjoying. <laughs> I don't think so. Because, you know, the closer I look at some of these guys that have gotten all this stuff, I kind of like my personal relationship with God, you know. Me and him, you know, we have these conversations that we kind of, we kind of sit down and we have these talks, you know, and I kind of go, you know, Lord, what if you gave me, you know, like some mega ministry? The Lord said, you wouldn't want it. You may see it, but you won't like it. And then I remember that scripture that talked about one of the kings in Israel who says, oh, ooh, the prophet came to him and said the same thing. The prophet said, thus saith the Lord, you may see it, but you won't like it. I'm going, okay, Lord, never mind. I remember. I remember the scriptures. I think I'll stick with what the Bible says, you know, and not want a mega ministry. You know, kind of like stick with what God is willing to give me as opposed to what I want to tell God to give me. And that's where I kind of find myself different than some Christians. And maybe you do too. Maybe it's not that you should get what you want. Maybe we should want to get what he gives. What do you think? You think that fits for you? It works for me. <laughs> I like to sing the song that way. I can't always get what I want, but I like what he gives unto me. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I'm kind of a rapper anyway, so what the heck? You know, we could always go with that hip-hop, you know, routine. And, 
Give me what you want. Give me what you got. Give me what you want for me. God. Give me what you want. Give me what you got. Give me what you want for me. God. Huh. Yeah. Get it? <laughs> okay. Maybe we won't hip hop. Anyways. Be watchful. According to the word, you know, we're doing daily light in case you were wondering. Yes, there is a point to all this. We do have scriptures for this. I think. Maybe it'll fit. Maybe it won't. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. <clears throat> the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. Take heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently unless you forget the things which your eyes have seen and that you depart from your heart all the days of your life. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Which and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch. Fear thou not, for I am with you, and be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with my right hand for my righteousness, because I am the Lord thy God, and with my hand I will uphold you. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. You know, whenever I stop, you know, shut up. <laughs> you know, that's for me. Stop means shut up. I zip the lippa. And that's not summon lippa or whatever. Somebody that I can't even remember who their name is. But I zip the lip. And I wait. And I watch. And I think. And I remember. I think God brings to my mind remembrance of the things that he's done in my past. God causes me to remember the things that he's promised me about my future. God takes me to the place where I can stand on the mountaintop and see all the things that are coming my way and reveals all the things that are in the way when I'm down in the valley. When I'm on the mountaintop, it looks like smooth sailing all the way there. And when I wait, and I stop, and I shut up, and I listen, then I hear God say to me, I'm with you. What's that? Huh? I'm with you. What? Huh? Huh? I'm with you. You see, God doesn't have to shout in order to make his word known. God doesn't have to scream and stomp, you know, or give you, ooh, Google eyes, or ooh, googly feelings, you know, kind of like running up and down your spine. That could just be a cold wind blowing, you know, and it got up my shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, it feels the same way, doesn't it? Ooh, that's cold. But God did say he would speak in a still small voice. God did say, I'm with you. God did say, I'm in you. God did say, I will be your God and you'll be my people. And you know, what kind of God would he be if he kind of like, you know, is all like what I see with other people unless I maybe don't really have a better understanding of who he is. Because maybe, maybe they got what they wanted but they didn't get what they needed. And you see, I don't know what they need, and I don't know what you need, but I need God in my life. I need Jesus to be so real and so personal to me that He can tell me when I'm doing something stupid because I do stupid things a lot. I go way out of my way to really do dumb things and open my mouth in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. Then I'm in trouble. And then I yell, God help me. So what I need maybe isn't what they need. 
But you see, they get what they want. And I only want what God gives me and what I need. And for me, I need to have Jesus more personal and real than maybe any other person around. Maybe I'm so bad off and so poor and so needy that I can only cry out to God daily to be as real to me as the living, breathing wife I have beside me. Maybe I need Him more than that. Maybe I need Him every moment of my life and every day I'm alive. Because you see, I'm really a screw-up and messed up. So, I don't know. I need God. And I don't want what everyone else has got. Because I've already asked that God would only give me Himself. Because that's all I want. It's all I need. It's all I'll ever hope for. It's to know Jesus. <laughs> you too? No? Okay. But as for me and my house, you know the rest. <laughs>